Coming up today on the cruise view, you're gonna watch this. Seriously, this, the entire time, it will be there. Plus, we're gonna take a look at the Cplex and we'll dine with the dogs. So, let's set sail. Welcome to day four of the cruise view. I'm Derek Cohn, once again on board the Quantum of the Seas. And right off the bat, I want to just apologize if I'm dark at times, but I think the Vista Ramas are a little bit worth not being able to see me. I don't quite think anyone watching is really concerned about seeing me when you've got this kind of stuff going on behind me. So let's just get into our top topics for the day. And of course, the main one that I've been following throughout the sailing has been the technology issues and today nothing's changed. We once again have the issues with the internet not working, the Royal IQ app doesn't work, and many other things around the ship just not functioning. But overall things aren't worse, which I guess is positive for once. And we do have better weather, so that's not a valid excuse anymore, it just seems like they have general issues with the O3B satellites that are causing all sorts of systems around the ship to not function. And then the second main topic that we've been following is the use of the word inaugural. And today of course was the inaugural arrival of the Quantum of the Seas to Port Canaveral for a first ever protocol of any kind. And there was nothing to do about it. When we first arrived in the port, a team of Customs and Border Patrol officers boarded the ship and they were going around on a tour, taking photos of all the different areas, but that was about the extent of any fanfare that occurred. There were people within the port itself that decided to show up and watch the ship sail in this morning as well as depart this evening, but nothing official by Royal Caribbean or anyone else involved in the Quantum of the Seas. And to go along with that, tonight we once again did not have any kind of gift in the cabin, so now in four nights we've had only two gifts, and only one of those was anything that said Quantum of the Seas or was Quantum specific. So they've certainly not been going out of their way to make this a special sailing, if they even acknowledge it at all. And then going back to today, it was the first port of call for the Quantum Seas I mentioned. We arrived in Port Canaveral at 6.30 a.m. this morning and it, we had departure this evening at 9 p.m. We were unfortunately unable to dock at the new terminal that I was mentioning yesterday. It is still about a month or so away from being completed. As we sailed by it, it looked like the actual terminal was done, but there's still heavy dredging going on all through the day and night as well as a lot of work on the general dock area itself. But instead we ended up over at terminal number six, which is also a newer terminal. I believe it is their current new terminal until that brand new one opens up. And it was still a nice experience. It was very easy to get through, no major issues. But it was certainly not as special as that new terminal, but anytime you've got something under construction, it's important to get it right and not rush it. And in this case, it really isn't necessary. We only had to pass through it. We didn't need a fully functional terminal. We could have even just unloaded straight to the dock. So it's understandable for them to want to take their time and not rush that project. But on to the weather. We unfortunately had a fairly rough day once again. We had a listed high of 75, but most of the day it was closer to the low 60s. Much of the time it was even in the 50s. This evening it was about 55 by four or five o'clock. So it was certainly a cold day, especially for Florida. And it was also a very rainy and windy day with a lot of rain from the moment we arrived at Port Canaveral all the way through until about 3 p.m. And then the skies opened up and we had some patches of sun shining through. 
And that led to a beautiful sunset at 5.26 p.m. this evening out over Florida. But, and it looked like a lot of people turned up on the top deck to see it as it was the first true sunset we've had on this sailing. And it was a great sight. But with this kind of poor weather sort of changing up, what did we do? Well, we are in Port Canaveral. A lot of people do the Disney or the Universal. We went with the obvious, the NASA. It was something we had never been to. And of course, being at Port Canaveral, why wouldn't you go there? So with the weather, it didn't really affect us too much. Most of the things to see are indoors. There's a little bit of walking, but nothing major. So overall, it really did not affect our day in any way. I don't know that anything would have been done differently had it been sunny out. So it wasn't a big deal for us. And then let's move on to the compass. And unfortunately, that is the compass. There really was nothing on the compass today. In fact, it was the smallest compass I have ever seen on a cruise. It was so small it fit within a single column on a single page of a standard compass. So somehow they've managed to top themselves and I'm not quite sure how they pulled that off because they've been doing a pretty good job of not scheduling a whole lot this sailing up to this point. So since there's nothing to really talk about going on the ship and tonight walking around there's just people wondering, looking for something to do as a lot of people have found their way here to just sit and watch the Vistaramas. Instead, we're going to talk about something I forgot to go into yesterday, and that was a change to the captain's noon announcements. So traditionally, the captain's announcements would take place at noon over the intercom system of the entire ship, but Royal Caribbean has decided to make a change to the procedures, and instead they're going to film each captain from the bridge each morning and then air it starting at noon on the TVs following the cruise director's daily report. Hi everybody, your captain again with another live update from the bridge on day four of our cruise. Uh, we are today in Port Canaveral. And that started with day three of the sailing yesterday and now today with day four they have started in addition to covering the current day's events they are now also going to be including tours of different areas. So today, for instance, was the bridge wing. So the captain showed a little bit of what goes on there and what the different parts of it are for. So it's certainly a little more beneficial in that way. You can see the captain, but it also feels a little less timely. The captain used to give live data on where we were, what was going on at that exact moment. We don't have as accurate information since it is now filmed at like eight or nine in the morning and then aired three to four hours later and continue to be viewed all the way until about midnight each night. So it was kind of a hit or miss, some ways better, some ways worse. I kind of wish they had done more graphics on it, something more that they could do a live graphic, maybe show the current conditions and a live graphic on the screen while the captain gave more basic information of the day. That way it's continuously accurate. But it is the first ship to do it and it was only the first and second day so we'll see how they go in the long run once they roll it out to other ships in the fleet. I'm sure they'll see what works, what doesn't work. A lot of different captains have their own little spin on it. So it should be interesting and it'll be a nice way for everyone to sort of get to know the captain more than we can over the intercom. It isn't that easy to understand a lot of times and now you can watch it at your leisure instead of trying to get somewhere at noon to hear it each day. The one downside to this change though is that you now have no announcements during the day so you also do not have the announcement when we're departing the port to say what's going on and in general just a lot less information seems to be coming across the intercom system than usual. And this lack of information coming across the intercom is not helped by the fact that the compass is once again lacking a lot of information. Today there was no listed arrival or departure times, something that once again is very basic information. I was also missing on the, the day one compass. I've already looked ahead to the compass for tomorrow and I saw that they did include it in a lower area of the compass within a paragraph of text. So at least it appears, but it is not as bold a statement as it traditionally has been, and I'm sure a lot of people are once again going to miss it, but hopefully once things get run a little smoother, they'll 
figure things out. I'm not quite sure why some of these things are an issue since they are basic things done on every compass, on every sailing. But hopefully they realize they shouldn't be messing with that and go back to the traditional way as it is important information and everyone should be aware of it. But now that we've gone through a compass that really does not have anything today, we're going to move on to the venue that probably has the most events on every day, including today. It seems like no matter what, this venue has more going on than any other part of the ship, and that is the Seaplex. When Royal Caribbean introduced the Quantum of the Seas, they stated that 270 was the living room of the ship and made that the key feature. But now that we're on board, it's clear the Seaplex is actually the heart of the ship. This is where the majority of activities are, the most usages. In fact, the Seaplex is likely the most used venue at sea with more options than any other venue afloat at this point. And those options are thanks to the fact that it is the largest indoor sports complex afloat featuring a full-size sports court behind me down on deck 15, the main level of Cplex. And that allows for not only basketball games, obviously, but other sports including racquetball and soccer. They also have hours during the day that it's just free open court. You can go and do whatever you want. But what really makes it special are the specialized items that they operate on that sports court, such as the bumper cars, the most publicized feature of this area of the ship. And that is what's currently going on behind me. That is always a popular event whenever they run it with huge lines. And it's just like any other bumper cars you would see on land. You get a short period of time to go, and then if you want, you can get back in line, do it as many times as you want. And there is no waiver required for that one. They also post roller skating on this venue. They offer roller skates that you can use and you have to wear helmet pads in order to go out. Usually, depending on the demand, they'll cycle through in groups in order to give enough space so you're not running into each other. And they also do disco parties in here with essentially a reverse North Star, a little DJ pod that comes out of the ceiling and is on a nice little crane, allows it to fully move around above the sports court in order to host those parties, along with several other activities. But the main one that has really stolen the spotlight of the Cplex from the bumper cars is the trapeze school. World Caribbean made a very small mention of it in the announcement and really hasn't focused on it too much. But on board, it is the one event that seems to be getting the most attention with everybody wanting to give it a shot. And essentially, they run in most days, they divide the sports court in half with a net, allow one side to continue to operate a sports court, and the other side, they roll out a giant blow-up mattress, in case you fall. And from the ceiling, they lower a trapeze stand along with apparatus, and you have to climb up a small ladder all the way to nearly the C-plex ceiling and go out on that stand, but then you're hooked up to a harness and you basically grab a hold of the trapeze and swing out. They try to get you to flip over and put your legs on it. Seems like it's been kids that have done it. We've seen old people do it across the board. Everybody's enjoyed it, whether they can complete it or not. But there really is no consistency in saying who can and cannot accomplish it. It's just something that you've got to try, see how you do. And it's one of those things that makes the Quantum of the Sea special and unique as there is no other ship that's offering this at this point. But even beyond that sport court on the floor, there's still more to offer in the Cplex. Up on the second level on deck 16 are four pods. I'm in one of them at the moment, two of which offer the table tennis for on board the ship. Third one offers air hockey tables. And the fourth one, this one, is the Xbox One pod, offering one wall with four TVs, each hooked up to an Xbox One, two wireless controllers, along with headsets, so that you can play a variety of games. They have both discs and pre-installed games to utilize. And then on the opposite wall is an even larger TV hooked up to a single Xbox One that includes a Kinect. So you can play all the Kinect games you want or whatever else you may feel like doing at a given time. And what really makes this pod special is the fact that it's not just an Xbox One pod, 
it is an Xbox One with Xbox Live. So all these Xboxes take advantage of the O3B satellite network and its enhanced bandwidth to allow you to play online against people around the world, including others that may be on more Royal Caribbean ships in the future, along with celebrity ships as the Solstice class does already have Xbox Ones on board their ships too. So this is a Cplex, probably the most heavily utilized venue on the high seas at this time. Cplex Doghouse, of course, located up here in the Cplex. Originally, the concept was added to the allure of the seas roughly four years ago as the Boardwalk Doghouse, but not having a boardwalk, they did rename it, unlike the Cafe Promenade that has retained its name across all the ships. It's also located on a few other ships, including recently added to the Oasis of the Seas, which was not built with one. The Cplex Doghouse offers a variety of different hot dog related items. There are four different ones to choose from, including the classic Coney Island, the Smokehouse, the German, and my personal favorite, the Big Apple. You also have a few different toppings to put on, including onions or sauerkraut, as well as two different sides to pick from. You can get either a pasta salad or sauerkraut. And along with the food options, the doghouse does not offer any complimentary drinks, but it does have a Coke Freestyle machine, so if you do have the drink package, you can come up here to get that. And located in the very back of the Cplex, its hours tend to mimic when activities go on here, usually for lunch and dinner. It does not go off into the late evening hours, though for late night snacks. And as far as seating, there is seating along the back corner where it is located, as well as if you go to the opposite side of the Cplex, you find some additional seating there. So while the doghouse does not offer a large variety of food, it does get very popular on sea days and is sure to be a place that you do not want to miss at least one time on your trip on board the Quantum of the Seas. So the Cplex is certainly the most active part of the ship, but it is also the most entertaining. Even if you're not into doing things, you can still show up and just watch people on the Trapeze Act or the bumper cars. So it doubles as both an entertainment and activity place, something that the sports court traditionally has not been able to accomplish. Usually you either played an activity on it or you did not care that it existed. That is no longer the case with the Cplex and hopefully as the sailing goes on we see it used for something beyond sports. Maybe they'll have a party or two in there. We still do not know where the quest is but maybe that'll occur there if I did not already mention that because I have not filmed that segment yet. But we'll see. So that about does it for today. So now let's look on to tomorrow because tomorrow is probably what's going to be my favorite day of this entire 19 night sailing, and that is our day in Nassau. A statement you probably don't expect to hear ever stated, but it's because we arrive at 1 p.m. and at that time, already in port will be the Carnival Magic as well as the Norwegian Breakaway. So in addition to Royal Caribbean's latest and greatest, the Quantum of the Seas, you're gonna have Carnival's latest and greatest design, the Carnival Magic, along with Norwegian's latest and greatest, the Norwegian Breakaway, all docked one next to another in Nassau, Bahamas, during the day and into the evening. So it will certainly be an incredible sight that has never been seen before, as the Quantum has never sailed anywhere before now. So I'm sure there'll be lots of great photos and videos, and hopefully for the first time it'll feel like an inaugural sailing. So I'm sure once we're getting into these islands, where it's a bigger deal for them to get a new ship, we're going to see a little more fanfare going on. But you'll just have to tune in tomorrow to find out what happened. So thanks for watching, and of course, stay tuned to the links.